بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of fundamentals of faith in our previous few episodes we had talked about shirk its definitions its dangers its categories and types and also some of the justifications that those who practice shirk use in order to justify their shirk. Today, we're going to talk about related topics, the topics of kufr and nifaq, or disbelief and hypocrisy. Stay tuned. Our topic for today is about kufr or disbelief and nifaq or hypocrisy. And as usual, the first thing that we do is we define these terms. So let us define the meaning of kufr. We turn to our lexicon, Lisanul Arab, and we look up kufr, and we see that he says that kufr means it comes from the root to cover up. It comes from the root to cover up something. And it is called, kufr is called kufr because a person covers his heart. As if he covers up his heart not to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the linguistic meaning of kufr is to cover up or to hide something. So it is as if he has hidden his heart from the truth. He has covered his heart up from the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he goes on and he says kufr is of various types. Kufr is of various types. So kufr is not just of one type. Kufr manifests itself in various forms. Of the types of kufr is the kufr of denial or rejection. Where a person rejects something from the Quran or Sunnah. Or he rejects the existence of Allah. Or he denies that the Prophet ﷺ is a real Prophet of Allah. Of the people who fell into this is those people and those uh, segments of society that deny that the Prophet ﷺ is a real and true Prophet. Also atheists and communists, those who deny the existence of Allah. So their kufr is a kufr of denial, rejection. As Allah says in Surah An-Kabut, verse 68, who does more harm than he who lies about Allah and disbelieves, rejects the truth after it has been made clear to him. So rejection of the truth. If any person rejects or denies anything that is fundamental to the religion of Islam, that Allah is the Rabb, that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi is a prophet, that the Quran is a book of Allah, then he is a kafir or a disbeliever by this type of kufr, kufr of denial. Another type of kufr is the kufr of arrogance. Kufr of arrogance. His heart might know the truth, but arrogance will prevent him from actually implementing that truth. And the greatest example, I shouldn't say the greatest, I should say the most disgusting example of this, is Iblis. Iblis, the main Satan, Shaytan himself. Iblis, does he not know Allah is the Rabb? Subhanallah, he was there when Adam was created. He saw Adam's creation. Yet, why did he refuse to worship Allah? Arrogance, istikbar. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 34, when we told the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all fell down in sajda except Iblis. They all prostrated. Except for Iblis, Abba was stuck, but he was too arrogant. He was too arrogant to bow down and worship. And because of that, Kanamid al Kafirin, he was of the Kafirs, the disbelievers. Also, another example of this is Fir'aun, Pharaoh. The Pharaoh of Moses, do you think he believed that he was God? No human being believes he is God. Yet he says, Ana Rabbukum al A'la, that's what he said, I am your God, I am your Rabb. But in his heart, he did not believe it. As Allah says in Surah An Naml, verse 14, that Fir'aun and his people, they denied Musa. They rejected Musa even though their hearts were certain of it. Fir'aun knew that Musa was a prophet of Allah. Fir'aun knew that he was not the Rabb. Fir'aun knew that Allah is the Rabb. And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was about to kill Fir'aun, when he was about to allow the oceans and the Red Sea to fall over him, what did Fir'aun say? He said, I believe in Allah. I believe in the God of the children of Israel. He didn't think he was God. But arrogance, istikbar. He knew it was the truth, but he was too arrogant to give up what, his, what he was believing and follow the religion of Allah. So one type of kufr, the second type is the kufr of arrogance. 
Likewise, another example is the example of the uncle of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Talib. Abu Talib knew of a certainty that his nephew, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was a messenger. He knew it. He was certain about it. But he could not give up the traditions of his fathers of old. It was too much for him. So he died a non-Muslim. So this is one type of kufr, kufr of arrogance. The third type of kufr is the kufr of doubt. The kufr of doubt. It's not that you've rejected. It's not that you're too arrogant not to worship Allah. Rather, you're not sure. And you don't care to find out. This is the point. You're not sure and you don't care to find out. And this is the case with many, many, many people in our times. They've heard of Islam. They know what Islam means. And if you were to ask them, do you really believe? I don't really know. That's what it's going to say. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I'm not sure. So he's not sure and he doesn't find out. He has the opportunity. He has the resources. He can go ask Muslim. He can read the Quran. But he doesn't care and he's not sure. He doesn't know whether it's true or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a person in Surah Al-Kahf verse 35. This, this person who was a disbeliever in Allah, what he said was, I am not sure whether there will be a day of judgment. I am not sure whether it's true or not. So this is the kufr of doubt. He's not sure. Something which is fundamental to this religion and he expresses his doubt about it. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. This is a kufr of doubt. Another type of kufr is the kufr of turning away. The kufr of turning away from Islam. He hears about it. He knows about Islam. He has the capability to discover more, but he simply doesn't, couldn't be bothered. He just couldn't be bothered. He is too engrossed in this world. He is too engrossed in his daily life. He's not going to take the time out to learn what Islam is and whether to accept it or not. So it's not as if he's rejected anything or he's in doubt. He just couldn't care less. Once again, a large segment of mankind falls into this category. They really don't care. They're going to be engrossed in earning their money and satisfying their desires, their sensual pleasures, in eating and drinking, passing their lives away. And they don't think at all about why am I here? What is the purpose of life? He hasn't even made up his mind. Is there a religion? Is there a God? He just couldn't care. And this too is a type of kufr. Allah says in Surah Al-Sajdah, verse 22, Who does more wrong? Woman of Lamu. Who does more wrong than he who, when he hears the verses of the Qur'an, he turns away from it. Not that he's rejected it, not that he's made up his mind, he just doesn't care. When you go talk to him about Islam, he just, he doesn't pay attention. And when that meeting is over, he goes back to his regular life. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Jinn, verse 17, وَمَنْ يُعْرِضَ عَنْ ذِكِرْ رَبِّهِ he who turns away from remembering Allah, he turns away. He doesn't care about Allah's remembrance. He is the one who will taste a very difficult punishment. This is the fourth category of kufr. The fifth category of kufr is the kufr of hypocrisy, nifaq. The kufr of hypocrisy, nifaq. And we will discuss this in greater detail in a little while. As Allah says in Surah Munafiqun, verse 3, he describes the hypocrites and he says, this is because they believed and then they disbelieved. This is the, the, the hypocrites. So Allah uses the word kafir or disbeliever to describe the hypocrites. So one type of hypocrisy or one type of kufr, one type of disbelief is the disbelief of hypocrisy. Now, these are five types of kufr. Anyone who performs or commits any of these types of categories of kufr is a non-Muslim. Because you're either a kafir or a Muslim. Two categories, there is no in-between. Either a kafir or a Muslim. These are the categories of major kufr. There is also a category called minor kufr, small kufr. And if you remember, we did the same thing in the types of shirk. There's major shirk and minor shirk. The same applies here. Minor shirk are acts which do not expel one from the fold of Islam, but they do not befit a Muslim. And they are the characteristics of the non-Muslims. For example, Akhi, if you can hand me uh, Sahih Bukhari, volume 1, we're going to look up a hadith and a verse. As for the verse, it is Surah Hujurat, verse 9. Allah says that if two groups of believers fight each other, 
Jazakallah khair. If two groups of believers fight each other, then cause some settlement, solve the problem between them. So Allah called two groups of believers who fight each other, He called them believers. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Each group is fighting the other. Despite that fighting, physical war, battle, despite that He called them mu'min or believers. Yet, the Prophet wasallam said in an authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari that fighting a believer is kufr. Qitaluhu kufr. Hadith number 48. Qitaluhu kufr. Fighting him is kufr. At the same time, Allah calls the one who fights his believer, his Muslim brother, a believer. So we combine between the Quran and the Sunnah. Remember, the Quran cannot contradict the Sunnah and the Sunnah cannot contradict the Quran. We take both of them together. We combine between the verse and the, and the hadith and we state that fighting a Muslim is a minor kufr. It, a, it is a minor kufr. It doesn't expel one from the fold of Islam, but it is not befitting for a Muslim and it is of the characteristics of the disbelievers. We'll take a short break and we'll come back to discuss kufr and nifaq or the kufr of hypocrisy. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. We were discussing kufr or disbelief and its various categories and manifestations. And we said that the last category or type of kufr is kufr or disbelief of hypocrisy. Kufr of hypocrisy, in Arabic we call it nifaq. Nifaq, hypocrisy. The word nifaq comes from the root nafiqa. Nafiqa. And this is a very interesting root to discuss. What is a nafiqa? Well, there is an animal called a jerboa. It looks like a very large lizard. It's a desert animal. Okay? And this animal, jerboa, is a very smart animal. It builds its cave and its den. It has an entrance to that den, and it has an exit to that den, just like every other animal does. However, it also has a false exit. It has an, a, a, a hole which looks like an exit, but in reality is not an exit. So when the, when the prey comes, when the beast comes to try to kill this jerboa for food, to try to capture it, it presumes that after the jerboa enters its cave, it will exit from the false cave. So the beast will go and wait for the jerboa at the false exit. Whereas in reality, the jerboa exits from the real exit. And it runs away after that. It's a very slick animal here. So the word nifaq comes from this root, which describes this exit. As if, the munafiq or the hypocrite entered Islam openly and left it secretly. This is where it comes from. As if the munafiq or the hypocrite, he entered Islam in front of everyone openly and then surreptitiously, secretly, he creeped away and, and, and fled. Beautiful roots. And it's always interesting, brothers and sisters, to go back to the root words of, 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 uh, the, of the terminologies of the Quran and Sunnah and see what they linguistically mean and then compare them to the definitions that are found in the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay, so this is the root of nifaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described the munafiqeen in explicit detail in the Quran. They are those who claim to be believers. Outwardly they claim to be Muslims. But in reality, in their hearts, they do not believe. They do not believe at all. So they pretend for some worldly benefit. Whatever the benefit might be. Whether it's safer to live in a Muslim society, whether for money, whether for whatever. But in reality, their hearts do not believe in Allah and His Messenger. It is only a show, a facade. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers in the first few verses that they are those who believe in the unseen, they establish the prayer, and they spend out of what we have provided for them, and they believe in what has been revealed to you, and to what is revealed before you, on and on. Then He describes 
and the, he describes the believers in four verses. Then he describes the disbelievers, the kuffar. Those who disbelieve, whether you warn them or not, it doesn't matter. And he spends two verses on the disbelievers. So four on the believers, two on the disbelievers, and then he discusses the hypocrites in 13 verses. 13 verses allocated to the hypocrites. That they are those who try to deceive Allah and His Messenger, but they only deceive themselves. Their similitude or the example is like one who is in the middle of the darkness. He doesn't have any light. And every time a lightning happens, he takes one step forward and then he stops again. In other words, he is ignorant. He doesn't know what to do, where to go, how to get there. So for 13 verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the hypocrites, showing you that they are the worst of mankind. Four verses for the believers, two for the disbelievers, the kuffar, and then 13 verses to expose the plots of the hypocrites. So, nifaq means someone, munafiq is one who believes or who pretends to believe in Allah and His Messenger, who outwardly claims to be a believer, who outwardly says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but in his heart, he doesn't believe. And this is nifaq. Once again though, just like with shirk and just like with kufr, there is major and there is minor. There is major shirk and minor shirk, major kufr and minor kufr, and major nifaq and minor nifaq. Minor nifaq are actions and characteristics that do not expel a person from the fold of Islam, but they are characteristics of the hypocrites. He who does them is not a perfect believer, but that doesn't mean he is a real hypocrite. If we turn to Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 34, we find some examples of this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there are four characteristics. Whoever has them is a hypocrite. And whoever has any one of these characteristics has a characteristic of hypocrisy until he leaves it. So these are four characteristics. Whoever has them is a hypocrite. And whoever has any one or a few of them, then he has characteristics of the hypocrites until he leaves them. The first one is, when he is trusted, he deceives that trust. The believer, when he is trusted with something, trusted with some money, trusted with keeping a secret, he fulfills that trust. To break that trust, to be deceitful and dishonest, this is an act of a hypocrite. The second one, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ When he speaks, he lies. Lying is not a characteristic of the believers. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ even told us that we should not lie even while cracking a joke. Even while making other people laugh, it is, not, it is preferable not to lie. Even though everyone knows it's a joke. Just because to, be, to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So of the characteristics of the hypocrites is that when he speaks, he lies. The third is that when he, he signs a contract or there's a covenant, he breaks that covenant. There's a treaty. He breaks that treaty. He is deceitful and dishonest in fulfilling that treaty. And the fourth is that when he argues, he uses vulgar terms. When he argues, he uses vulgar terms. Be careful, brothers and sisters, from falling into any one of these characteristics. Any one of these characteristics. Because all of these characteristics are the character who doesn't believe in Allah. Whereas he pretends to believe, regarding them, Allah says, but the worst applies to paradise. Paradise too has many levels. The higher you are, the more blessed you are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the munafiqun, the hypocrites, the major hypocrites, those that have committed major hypocrisy, they will occupy the lowest level of the fire of hell. We seek Allah's refuge from that. So we conclude by stating that kufr is the opposite of Islam. Kufr is the opposite of Islam. You're either a kafir, a non-Muslim, or you're a Muslim. You either have iman or you don't have iman. You either have faith or you don't have faith. There is no middle ground. But there are various types and various manifestations of kufr. Of those manifestations is kufr of arrogance. Of them is the kufr of denial. Of them is the kufr of doubt. Of them is the kufr of turning away and not caring about anything. And of them is the kufr of nifaq. Same thing applies to hypocrisy as well, is that there are major and minor categories of nifaq. Whoever commits major nifaq is a kafir. Whoever commits acts of minor nifaq, minor hypocrisy, he must leave them 
until and until he leaves them, he is characterized by characteristics of hypocrisy. And we conclude by quoting the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which he says that there are three things. There are three things. Whoever has them will taste the sweetness of faith. Three matters. Whoever has them taste the sweetness of faith. The first one is that Allah and His Messenger be more beloved to Him than everything else besides them. The second one is that He, he loves another person only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the third one is that He hates to return to kufr after Allah has saved him from it just like He hates to be thrown into the fire. So we must hate kufr and we must hate returning to kufr as well. We must hate kufr in all of its manifestations and we must in our heart have a fear of falling into this act of kufr. Therefore we seek Allah's refuge from doing any act of kufr. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst those who have these characteristics and who taste the sweetness of faith. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.